Have you ever been in a situation where your dependencies just break for no apparent reason? This happens pretty often if you're on the bleeding yeah. edge of software or if you're just in web development. Anyway, so my image importing library broke, so I decided I'll write my own. I mean, how hard can it be, right? I figured I'd just use PNG since that's what everyone seems to use. So I took a look at some PNG loading libraries and I realized that it's really complicated. After that, I decided that's way too big brain. So I'll have a look at some other formats. I figured for some reason that BMP would be super simple. So I looked up the file format on Wikipedia and I found that the 32 bits per pixel images are always stored uncompressed. That's great. Don't have to deal with compression stuff. However, a sprite doesn't support BMP alpha channels, so that was a no-go. JPG is a kind of a non-starter. Since we're using pixel art, we can't use JPGs because they get those weird artifacts. And also they don't support transparency, so. I remembered some kind of file format from when I was doing modding, like 15 years ago. I think it was Counter-Strike or Warcraft. Anyway, there's this uh, file format called Tarja, TGA, and I remember that supported transparency. So I decided to have a look at that. So I looked up the file format on Wikipedia again, and I found uncompressed 24-bit TGA images are relatively simple compared to several other prominent 24-bit storage formats. A 24-bit TGA contains only an 18-byte header, followed by the image data packed as RGB data. That's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted, something easy. So I made this little test image. It's got red, green, cyan, pink, blue, white. And actually the gray color in the middle is uh, transparent, although it just looks like gray. Let's open it up in a hex editor and have a look. So opening it up in a hex editor, I can see what looks like the pixel data, especially the AAAAAA80, that's gotta be the gray color. So we can see all of the colors are there. And then there's some stuff at the end. It says true vision dash X file. And there's some stuff at the beginning, which is the 18 byte header, I guess. Now at this point, I already know what the data is that I wanna get out of the image. Just the pixel data, RGBA, and the width and height. But I was a bit confused for a while because it's actually in a blue, green, red alpha format instead of red, green, blue, which is what I'm used to. And luckily enough, OpenGL supports just importing uh, blue, green, red alpha pixels directly. So I don't have to do any pixel reshuffling or anything like that. All right, and here's the entire library in 34 lines, but the loading function is only 15 lines. So here we load the file into memory. We get the width and the height getting values from the header. So bytes 12 to 14 is the width and bytes 14 to 16 is the height. We don't care about any of the other header data. Then we just calculate the amount of bytes by multiplying them together and multiplying that by four because we've got red, green, blue, and alpha. Then we create some space for the pixels using that byte count we just made. And then we copy the contents and we grab the byte count. Then we just return the image. Uh, with heightened pixels, it's this struct here. And then in the usage code, we do something like, here it is. So we've got this image loading section when we load all the textures when the engine is starting up, right? We call it here. And then we just free the pixels after we're done. And we have the width and the height available. We send it to this function that uses OpenGL, which I'll show you now. The OpenGL function just takes the pixel data width and height and puts it into a 2D texture using the BGRA data format. So we can actually just use those pixels directly without transforming them in any way. But then we store them as RGBA8 because that's the internal format that makes sense when you've got this pixel data. So I highly recommend using TGA if you wanna make a really simple image loading library just to kind of understand how it all works. All right, and here's an example of the images being loaded into the engine at runtime. Everything looks normal, so I'd say that's a success. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, I actually have a free course here on YouTube about how to make a game and engine from scratch in C, so check that out. Links are in the description.